announce my new late beginner version of the beautiful hymn I Need Thee Every Hour. So I'm going to play it for you now and then stick around till afterwards and I'll teach you part of the piece. Isn't that a beautiful, peaceful hymn? Now, I want you to learn it in the quickest possible way. So I'm going to help you do that now with part of the piece. And if you want to learn the whole piece in this way, then you can check the link up in the cards or down in the description box to get the full video lesson. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to be looking at section C of I Need Thee Every Hour. And you'll notice this is now in 3-4 times. So let me play it for you and then I'll explain what that means. One, two. Now let's get everything you need to get started. So make sure you've got your harp and you've got a chair set up in a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. Um, you want to be sitting on a chair and not a couch and make sure it's the right height for you. Then also make sure you have a music stand with your music sitting right in front of a front right in front of you where you can see it easily without having to turn your head. And then we're going to look at our body position. Make sure that everything is in alignment. We're not going to be twisting around to see our strings. We rather want to have the harp slightly twisted so that we can see everything when, we, when our heads are looking straight ahead. And then we're going to make sure that everything is really relaxed so you can kind of give yourself a little bit of a shoulder massage by rolling your shoulders. Make sure you're breathing deeply. And then we're going to keep those shoulders relaxed. We're going to make sure that our arms are away from our body, that our wrists are in neutral, never, um, maybe a slight valley, but never a heel like that. We don't want that to happen. So keep it in neutral. And then our thumbs are going to be up, our fingers pointing down. And we're going to make sure every time we pluck that our fingers are plucking straight down into the palm of the hand and the thumb coming over. And we're going to follow through with every movement. So that means we complete it right into the palm of the hand. Okay, let's talk through this section. So your right hand is going to be two and one on C and E. And then you're going to make sure you can land on the strings together, place them together. And then you play your two and play your one and float off. And then we're going to place one, two, three on D, C, B. Find your positioning and then make sure that you can come off and land with all the fingers landing together. Practice that a few times on and off, on and close, on and close. So you want to land with them together. And then we're going to play one, two, place your thumb and play three and one. Very good. Let's do that again. Place one, two, three with your thumb on D, play one, two and place your thumb and play three and one and this comes faster than the notes we had in the intro of this piece those are eighth notes now instead of quarter notes so let's look at how the timing of this works let's go back to the beginning so we have two and one on c and e and these are quarter notes so we're going to come in on beat three or actually beat four because 
the intro was in 4-4 time. But anyway, so we come in on beat 4 and then we're going to have 4, 1, 2, and 3, and 1, 2, 3. So don't worry about the numbers that I'm counting, you just want to hear it and get the feeling for it. So let me take you through that. We're going to come in on beat 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, and 3, and 1, 2, 3. Let's do it a bit slower. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, and 3. Place. 1, 2, 3. And make sure that you're doing your correct placing each time. So you play and come off. You place 1, 2, 3 together and you play 1, 2, place the thumb and play 3 and 1. You don't want to start to place the, play the notes kind of on their own one by one like that. You want to make sure that you're staying grounded on the strings and really placing properly. Um, so if you're not doing that as we're counting, you need to go back to the beginning of this video where I start talking you through those notes and make sure your placing is happening correctly. Um, let's do it with the right timing one more time and then we're going to look at how the left hand joins in. Coming in on beat 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Very good. Okay, let's look at how the left hand plays during this time. So you place your left hand third finger on C and your thumb on G. Your second finger is going to be hanging down nice and loose in between, nice and come cocking up like that. It must just come straight down. And then we're going to squeeze those strings, make sure we get a good sound and we pluck our third finger down into our palm and the thumb all the way over and float off. Let's do that again. Place three and one, they should land together on the strings with the second finger down. And then we play three and one. Very good. And then the next measure is the exact same thing. Place three and one and play your three and your one. Very good. Well done. That's pretty simple. <laughs> so now let's look at how that goes together with the right hand. So left hand you place your 3 and 1, right hand you place your 2 and 1 on C and E, left hand is C and G. Right hand plays the 2 and then the left hand joins in as you play your 1. And your left hand plays the thumb and your right hand needs to place 1, 2, 3 and we play 1, 2, place your thumb, 3 and by then your left hand must have placed 3 and 1 again and we play it together, the right hand thumb and the left hand third finger. Let's do it again. <laughs> so left hand 3 and 1 on C and G, right hand 2 and 1 on C and E, we're going to play the right hand 2 and left hand third finger with the right hand thumb, place your right hand 1, 2, 3 on D, C, B and left hand plays the thumb and right hand plays one, two, place your thumb and place your left hand three and one and play the right hand one with the left hand third finger and then the left hand thumb. Okay, that was quite a lot of words for me to say. I hope it didn't overwhelm you too much. <laughs> so pause here, go back to where I talked you through that again do that over and over. As we said, it's like you want to be able to predict what I'm about to say before I say it. Like you know what's coming next and then you know you're really on the right track. Um, you, you want to be able to slowly know when, hand e when each hand places compared to the other hand and when they play also. Um, so you really need to work on that thoroughly. And then when you're done with that, you can move on to now we're going to look at the timing. So we're going to come in on beat 4, remember that's just because the previous section was in 4-4 four, four time. And now, after that 4, we're going to be in 3-4 time. So place your right hand 2 and 1 on C and E, left hand 3 and 1 on C and G. We're coming in on beat 4 and then each measure is only 3 beats. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Let's do that again. Place both hands. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
So if you're struggling to keep up as I played there, and you're just not keeping with the timing, I can guarantee that the problem is that you're not placing well enough. It's not that you're just not playing fast enough, it's that your placing isn't solid enough. So go back to the part where I talk you through the placing with both hands. And if that's a bit unfamiliar, you may have to go back to the placing of the right hand on its own. And then once you've got your placing really thoroughly, then come back to the section where I just talked you through the timing. And once you're okay with this part, now we're gonna do the second half of section C. It's very similar in terms of the timing. So your right hand is going to play a C on its own with the second finger and another C with your second finger and then you're going to place one, two, three, four on thumb on D, second finger on C, third finger on A and fourth finger on G. So that's an interesting shape. It has a skip between fingers two and three. So it's not adjacent strings there's a little bit of a difference there so find those notes make sure your thumb is nice and high up your fingers are pointing down check that your wrist is in neutral your elbows away from your body and your shoulders are relaxed and then you've got this position so squeeze those strings and then come off close your hand and try and open your hand to that same shape and see if you can land with all fingers landing together and it won't happen right away, so you're going to have to practice that a few times. Come off and close and open to that shape and try and place them to land all together. Come off again and close, open to the right shape and place all together. You definitely don't want to be placing with your fingers up and then sliding down. Be very strict on yourself with that. Make sure you can place with them landing really uh, confidently all together. When you're okay with that placing, let's move on. So we place them all together. If you haven't got that, please pause here <laughs> and practice your placing. It's going to pay off. Remember that thorough practice really pays off when it comes to playing through your piece smoothly. Okay, so then we're going to play one, two, three, and four. And that's actually the end of section C. So let's go back again. We're going to place your second finger on C and you play a C and another C. Place one, two, three, four. They should land together and play one, two, three, four. And those are actually eighth notes. So they're going to be faster than the C's that came before it. Um, so let's look at how the timing would be. One, two, three, one two, three, one, two, three. So the important moment is after you've played the second C, are you able to place one, two, three, four landing all at the same time on the strings in the right shape and the right hand position? If you can't do that, please don't go on until you've sorted that out. You practice that by coming on and off the strings many times until your placing is really steady. Um, and then we're gonna look at what the left hand is doing and join them together. So the left hand continues with that pattern we had earlier where we have three and one in a fifth interval. That means you're skipping three strings in between. Um, but now your third finger will be on F below middle C and your thumb is going to be on C. So find those notes. Make sure your second finger is hanging down. Squeeze those strings. Come off and close and land with the three and one together. Practice your landing so that you can place with three and one landing simultaneously. And then we're going to play it. Play your third finger down into your palm, your thumb all the way over and float off. Let's do that again. Place three and one on C and G. Play your three down into your palm, your thumb all the way over and float off. And then we come back to the same three and one, but on C with your third finger on C and your thumb on G. Let's play, uh, place that with three and one. Play your third finger and play your thumb and float off. Very good. So that's all we have for the rest of section C. So we have an F, C, and then a C, G. Very good. So let's put that together with the right hand for this little part. So left hand, you're gonna place three and one on F and C. Right hand, you've got your second finger on C. We're gonna play that C in the right hand. And now right hand is gonna play the C with the left hand third finger. And the left hand plays the thumb while the right hand is placing one, two, three, four, remember on D, C, A, G with a skip in between. And then you play one, 
two, three, and the left hand is placing on C, three and one on C and G, and with the fourth finger of the right hand, you play your left hand third finger. And then the thumb. <laughs> Let's do that again. So left hand three and one on F and C, right hand, second finger on C, and we're gonna play the right hand, and then again the right hand with the left hand third finger, and the left hand thumb, right hand should be placing, and then we have one, two, three, and the left hand joins in. Very good. Okay, if you weren't quite sure of that and you were hesitating or not quite with me, then um, pause here, go back and do that over and over, and when you can do that three times without any mistakes, and you know exactly what's happening when, when I'm about to say it, you're predicting what I'm going to say, then you're ready to do it with the timing now. <laughs> um, so we're going to come in on beat three with the right hand C. So place your left hand C and uh, F and C, right hand on C, and we're going to play the right hand on beat three. One, two, three, one, two. Was that I have faith in you I know you can do it even if you're not doing it right now it's just gonna take some thorough practice some hard work and you're gonna get there so go back keep going with your practice over and over and over the same section remember there's no shame in repetition it's actually the very smart way to practice okay and when you're comfortable with that little section we're now gonna put the whole of section C together and then we're done with section C. Maybe you need a deep breath first. Let's roll your shoulders, get all that tension out. You can even shake your arms, let, let any of the tension go. Do some deep breathing, breathe in and out. Tell yourself, I can do it. It's not a race. It's okay if I don't get it right away. I'm just gonna keep going because I'm a persistent person. Now we're going to try going through section C. So right hand two and one on C and E, those ones, and left hand three and one on C and G. I'm going to um, talk you through it first without the correct timing and then we'll do it again with the right timing. So right hand second finger, left hand joins in with the right hand thumb. Place the right hand, one, two, three, and then we play one, two, we place the thumb, and the left hand we place on C again. Right hand, second finger on C. And when we play it again, the left hand is going to play the F. And we've got three and one placed on F and C in the left hand. So let's play the right hand, second finger, and the left hand, third finger. Now the left hand, thumb. And we're going to place the right hand, one, two, three, four, with the skip in between. Your thumb is on D. And we play one, two, three. Now the left hand is on three and one on C and G. And we play the fourth finger of the right hand and the third finger of the left hand. Okay, <laughs> that was quite a lot. Um, but let's go back and do that again. So I'm gonna let you just pause and go through that over and over until you're really confident with it and there's no hesitations. And now we're gonna do it with timing. Okay, let's play it with the correct timing now. So we're gonna come in on beat four because remember the intro section started on beat, it was in four, four time. And then we're gonna have three in every measure after that. So place your right hand two and one on C and E and your left hand three and one on C and G. And I'm not gonna tell you the placing, I'm just gonna do the counting this time. Coming in on beat four. One, Two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And maybe that was a little fast for you right now, so let's do it again at a slower speed, and you can use each of those whenever you need it in your practice time you can repeat it over so here's the slower counting one two three four one Okay, 
So if you are having a struggle keeping up, again, I'm pretty sure it's probably a placing thing. So go back and secure your placing. Go to the part where I talk you through all the placing of the hands together for section C. And then when you're really, really good at doing all your placing at the right time, then you can do it again with me counting you through the timing. Um, but well done for everything you've done so far. Um, if you can play through section C pretty well, then I think this piece is at the right level for you and you can continue with the video lesson. If you feel kind of stressed out and like you're not managing at all and it's just completely out of your depth, then maybe you should try one of the easier video lessons and you can always come back to this in a few weeks when you've worked through something a little easier first. Um, but in the meantime, let's have a tea break. I'm a bit tired and I'm pretty sure you are too. <laughs> so after the tea break, I'll see you in either you can repeat this video or if you're ready to move on, I'll see you in the next video where we start with section D. <laughs> okay, bye. Well done. You can pause and repeat any parts of this video as many times as you need to. Remember that practicing thoroughly is the quickest way to learn a piece. And if you'd like to learn the rest of this piece in this way, then you can do that with my video lesson. The link is on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the video lesson. Bye.